what if I, uh, what if I told you that you don't really have to use terminal all the time to use Linux? Well, oh, man, I'm going to get a lot of hate from this. Okay, let's get into it. Before we get into this video, which, you know, get ready to sharpen your pitchforks <laughs> if you don't like flat packs. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. This number right here, this, this right here, like that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much. For those of you that don't know, this number gets you, uh, after we get to 4,000 public watch time hours, we're eligible to potentially be in the YouTube partner program. And it was a number that honestly, it shouldn't matter to people just make content and, and make things that people enjoy. But for me, this number is directly tied to people actually enjoying and, and knowing that I've, I've done something that I've, that I've accomplished something for someone. And I was about to end YouTube. And for some of you, that might be something that you wish happened. Um, but this number right here, this is. This used to be between three and 500. And when you sit there over years and you watch and see that this number doesn't ever go beyond a certain point, it gets kind of demoralizing. And to see it constantly grow, the people that have been beside me for this entire time, you know, are also excited watching it. So we do, we do, a, you know, this, this is inside the discord app. We do a nightly update at 3 AM. I post or thereabouts. I post in discord. Hey, this is where we're at guys. Thank you. And so this way, everybody else gets to be involved in the process too. But for those of you that aren't in the discord, I just wanted you guys to be able to, you know, see this, take two minutes real quick at the start of the video and just say, thank you for all the time that you spent watching the crap that I put out um, before I wind up getting sappy and, and, and tearing up. Thank you. Let's get into the video. Now for the Gen 2 users or the Arch users or just general Linux users that have been doing this for a hot minute, this video just really isn't necessarily going to be for you. But throughout the entire process that I've gone through with trying to do some, some videos related to Linux and you know, try and kind of get my feet wet with how I want to do things, uh, in that space, I encourage people to use flat packs to install applications at the very beginning with the concept of, I'm going to then teach you how to use the terminal and I'm still going to be teaching how to use the terminal. I've done multiple videos that involve the concept of using the terminal since then, right? Or like I'm doing the live streams and we're using the terminal. And we're, we're just kind of using Linux the way that it's conventionally used. But there, there, there's an argument that can be made when, when it comes to the year of the Linux desktop actually possibly being a thing in the future. And I think that there's a little bit of an elephant in the room that we need to talk about. See, if you're coming from something like Mac OS or from windows, you're going to be used to going to the, going to a website, downloading an application and running the executable or the DMG. And that's just something that you're, you, you know, you're probably used to. And the world of Linux seems really scary because that, that doesn't exist. You've heard about the terminal and how you have to use the terminal and the terminal will rule your life and join us, join us in this terminal. You will become one with the ship, one with the command line. But realistically, a lot of work has been put in to make transitioning or using Linux really, you know, a little bit more seamless and easy for new users. Now I'm really familiar with this concept from the concept of the KDE environment with discover, and you can use discover without being in the KDE environment. You're going to do a little bit more work to get it working. And realistically, you shouldn't necessarily be doing this on something like Cache OS or Manjaro or Arch Linux itself, because 
you're, you're going to be using a little bit of terminal to get to it. Regardless, you're actually going to have to use the terminal because I can't fully spare you from it. But let's, let's take a look at what I've got here. Just, just hear me out for a moment. We're going to pull up our terminal real quick. Control Alt T. And if we go off and type in sudo hackman or apt get or apt not getting dash get no just apt apt or dnf but we're going to do that and then our install so it's going to be slash install or it's going to be install or hyphen capital s in arch linux um systems and then we're going to type in flat pak right and we can go ahead and install flat pack it's really easy it's really simple to use and then if you're in the environment like I am here with the Arch Linux or the um, Cache OS or Arch Linux, you're going to go off and do sudo pacman hyphen capital S and discover. And we'll go ahead and install discover. The last thing that we're going to need to do is you're actually going to want to Google it, but I'll try and remember to put it in here. Um, you're going to install f the um, uh, flat seal, right? Flat pack. Now that we've got the other stuff installed, install flat pub. And then we're going to do com. Actually, never mind. We're trying to avoid the terminal. Real easy then. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here and type the word flat and seal. And then we'll install this where I've already got it. So we don't need to do that. See, we've already skipped out on one need for the terminal. I already have Steam installed, which I installed through the Flatpak store, right? Through Discover. So we have that. Now I want to have access to my drives, which if I go in here and do storage, and we'll just ignore that it's already there. If we click add drive, it comes up with something like this. If we go over here to flat seal, which you can just find by typing flat seal, and we come over to Steam, scroll all the way down. I went too far. Oh, but there we go. In file system, we click this little folder to add. I'm going to delete it. And then in GNOME disk utility, which you should have installed in one of my previous videos, we're going to copy this string that's right here. Copy it. And then we paste it right there. And then Steam will actually show, if we go into settings here, storage, when we click, because I can't, I don't think I can remove it. Can I re remove, li uh, re remove library? There we go. Confirm. We go in here, add. It'll actually show us that extra drive now. And that's one of those things that I need to talk about. With Flatpak, you have a lot of, um, little bits of complexity. This is a little bit easier though, in terms of some of the benefits that it then provides. Flat packs run inside of a sandbox, which means that it doesn't touch your system unless you give it access to that. You also have cross distro compatibility that comes through. You have all of the dependencies are bundled. So yes, flat packs are a little bit larger on your disc, but it also has everything that it needs. So things that break, like not having the right dependency, say you need a, say, say you need a Python V2, um, and you also need Python V4. If for some reason something's written wrong, you run into a situation like Linus ran into. I'm being very generalistic here, and I, I realize that this is going to be a, a little complicated, but um, you run into a situation like with pop OS where Linus wound up deleting his entire system. Flat packs are very independent inside of, inside of your system. The, the part of this video that's actually really important, cause I don't want to go into a huge deep dive. I don't even know why I went through that. That's not part of my script. I've got my notes here. I should follow them. The thing that I wanted to do with this is to also talk to, you know, the Linux diehards here. We want to see a year of the Linux desktop. That's been something that's been talked about for a long as heck time as, as far as I've been involved in Linux. I, I remember hearing it like back in like 2013, 
people were talking about the year of Linux desktops going to be around and it's coming soon. And one of those things that I think facilitates that being a possibility in the future is something like discover that we have here, right? Where users can go off and say, Hey, I want, okay, we're going to, we're going to ignore Spotify. Say, say they want, um, does Etcher have, no, Molina Etcher doesn't have, well, if I, if I spelled it right too, E T T H E R. All right. Molina Etcher doesn't have, have that. This, this is falling flat on its face really quick. And I'm going to leave it in because, you know, um, shoot, what is Give me a second? There we go. Brain, brain. Couldn't think of it. So say we want something like Krita, right? We can install Krita as a flat pack. It has all of the dependencies and everything that it needs to function properly. We can go in and grab something like uh, Blender, right? We have Blender, 3D modeling application. You just click one button and poof, it's installed. And that's something that people coming from Mac OS or Windows are really going to be struggling with. I know that I struggled with it when, when it came to learning the terminal. And I went to school for this crap. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of effort and I'm still struggling because I didn't spend a lot of years in, in, in it fully, right? I don't have decades in it where like, this is all I've ran. I fought through all of the, you know, tiresome hellish hellscape that, that existed beforehand in the early days of, of, of Linux. I'm jumping back into this as a full-time thing now. Thanks to PewDiePie, it, you know, thanks PewDiePie, <laughs> you know, Felix, it, solid man. I saw your video and I went, well, now's the time I should start paying attention to this a little bit more and try to do videos. But there's going to be a lot of people that don't have that experience where they weren't running things like Kali Linux for school, where they weren't doing things like trying to run servers off of, you know, Ubuntu. And, 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 and selling that as a service to businesses, right? Like I have an experience level that does exist because that's the level of nerd I am. There's going to be newer people that are jumping into it saying, Hey, I've heard about the steam deck so I can play my video games. Um, I, I heard that, you know, DaVinci, uh, resolve exists. Well, only if you have an Nvidia card, but there's things like Caden life. That are fantastic that work really well and i hated it in just like a, a few videos ago i wound up dedicating myself to it because i was like let's go without using anything microsoft windows related at all let's just force myself to do that for a week and see where it goes all of my recent videos have been edited audio has been fixed all of that stuff has been done inside of Caden Live. it's not perfect but at the same time, if we want to encourage and bring in newer users, we have to be willing to realize they're going to need tools. They're just going to need it. So why ignore the tool that already exists? Things that allow them to have multi-versions, right? And we can show people how to use those things. It's a lot easier, especially at the very start. Things like Spotify. Spotify has been a pain in my butt to install multiple times. Uh, I think we also have YouTube music, right? Don't we have like a YouTube music thing? Well, there's a bunch of stuff that YouTube would be really upset about. <laughs> oh, let's see music, right? Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. It's not a, it's not a Google provided thing, but it does have the YouTube music built into it. There we go. That's what I was thinking of. And here we go. Krita, Caden live. Uh, Lisa, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we've, we've got, we've got, we've got tools. We've got things. The work's been put in to make it easier. Um, signal, right? Signal desktop right there. That's something that I use And arguably I should actually have it done as a flat pack because it does provide more security doing it that way. I know there's going to be people that disagree with me on this, but if you're a new user, don't be concerned about what other people are like or don't like that you install. 
you're going to have your own challenges getting into this environment to get used to flat packs or to get used to the terminal or to change your entire way of thinking this, this the, Linux has a long way to go when it comes to new users, gnome disutility, right? Fantastic application. Most new users are not going to understand that this type of thing doesn't auto mount. You put in a hard drive on, on, on windows or Mac OS and you format it and it's there. You have access to it. It doesn't work the same. There's certain applications that only function inside of ext4, btrfs, things like that. If you have an NTFS partition, Lutris is not going to function properly for you. You're not going to easily be able to play things like Cyberpunk 2077. I had a hell of a time. I eventually just decided, screw it. My game drive is just going to be a, a, uh, ext4 partition. It just, that's just going to be what it is and that's fine, but there's already enough challenges. We need to start coding and designing things just like we need to work on having more accessibility options for like blind and, and, and deaf individuals. We, we need to also start working on having more options for the new users as well that are going to be coming over. And it's an important thing. I'm currently learning how to program, um, again, because it's been a long time. I, I spent my, you know, the past, you know, decade and a half working with hardware, um, spending my time underneath the microscope, micro soldering and fixing components and things like programming in C or Python, they leave your brain. So I'm having to relearn those things. I'm learning how to do rust because there are tools that I need from the windows world that don't exist here. They don't, they just don't. The ability to do multiple audio sources, it, it, it's a pain in the butt using a lot of things that are built into, you know, are designed for Linux. The usability as far as a general user is abysmal when it comes to that side of things. Um, and I don't need to get into a huge rant with that right now, because my current rant is let's make flat packs better. Let's add a little bit more accessibility. Let's help people not have to do 12 million applications to make things work. Mainly because we want Linux to take off. And the thing that made those other systems like Mac OS and windows so predominant is the accessibility. That's my thoughts. Leave your thoughts down in the comments, share, be civil down there, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Don't be afraid to dive on into the rift.